Hello, my fellow Bond fans, and welcome to my latest 007 review, where today I review the uh, most recent <laughs> James Bond video game, 007 Legends. Specifically the PS3 version, but all versions are very much the same other than controls. With the current uh, Bond movie, No Time to Die, the 25th Bond movie, still delayed, I thought, well, I've still got to keep up some James Bond content on my channel, and I recently reviewed Never Say Never Again, and the 1967 Casino Royale movie, and I also reviewed the PS3 version of Quantum of Solace. But today I decided to review 007 Legends. Back in 2012, this was the game to celebrate the 50th anniversary of James Bond, and it was uh, also going to be coinciding with the release of Skyfall. And basically the whole concept of 007 Legends is that it's, it's basically you're playing through highlights of all the previous Bond movies. So with each of the six actors, you have one of their films, and you're playing a couple of levels through each. So you play through the levels of Goldfinger, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, License to Kill, Die Another Day, Moonraker, and Skyfall. The Skyfall levels were actually uh, downloadable content, which I also did download for this game, thankfully. And uh, yeah, so I will be able to talk about those as well. Suffice to say, there is a plot, and I will explain the plot. Play as James Bond in this first-person shooter adventure. You will encounter the most memorable nemesis of 007 spanning from Goldfinger to Skyfall. 007 Legends. Uh, yeah. I don't know really what to say about this game. It's a huge disappointment. I don't hate this game, but my god, this could have been so much better. I just think this was totally rushed. It was a complete rushed cash grab of a game. And it, it contains gameplay which is very dull and monotonous. All you're doing is shooting guards and breaking into offices using gadgets. And there's a couple of driving segments as well, but they're not really much. So there is a there is a de decent amount of variety with the gameplay, but it's just, that's all you do. And it's over really quickly. They don't do much with it for you to feel remotely engaged. And after a while, the levels just become so frustrating to play. Like, that you just sort of give up with this game. Honestly, this game irritated me more times than... You know, a fucking laser going to my ball sack. <laughs> what golf? Well, you understand the analogy anyway. And also, another issue I have with this game is the fact that they recreate these these moments with um, modernization. I mean, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. But throughout this entire game, you're playing as Daniel Craig's Bond, which obviously me personally, I'm fine with because I mean, I I love Daniel Craig's Bond. He's my favorite Bond. But on this occasion, I feel like it would have been appropriate to play as the respective Bond for each of their movies. So Connery for Goldfinger, Lazenby for Majesty's Secret Service, Dalton for License to Kill, Brosnan for, you know, Die Another Day, Roger Moore for Moonraker, etc. So it just feels really odd. And also the fact is that Daniel Craig himself does not voice Bond in this game. We have a guy called Timothy Watson who tries to do a Daniel Craig impression. And my goodness me, it is terrible. He does an awful Daniel Craig impression. The acting for the most part in this game is pretty crap. Everybody is... Is so bland. I mean, you've got people from the movies who do reprise their roles. You obviously have Judy Dench as M, and you've got Rui Kinnear as Tanner. It's nice to have them. And then you've also got Michael Lonsdale, who returns for Drags, which is amazing. That's See, that's fantastic. You've also got Carrie Lowell as Pam Bouvier, and Toby Stevens as Gustav Graves. So, the premise of this game is awesome. It should be awesome. The fact that you could replay highlights of all these movies. And I, I honestly think there is a potential for a great game here. The problem is, it is just so rushed. It is so rushed and, and forced. Also, the gadgets are pretty interesting. We've got this, um, so the, the smartphone, which, which Bond uses quite a lot. Use it to take pictures and scan fingerprints and follow trails to power cables so you can activate things. It's very easy, but after a while, you're doing the same things in every level. Going into the villain's office and trying to find things that way. You also have things like a dart pen and a laser watch, which are also very cool. So I do appreciate the variety of gadgets, even if it does become repetitive to play them. The melee system is very weird. You have to basically just press the, move the analog sticks up and down and and block uh, attacks so that the boss fights are not really too challenging, to be honest. And then, like I said, it's, it's just a lot of shooting. And I mean, this this game has the similar sort of game engine to GoldenEye Reloaded, so it feels very much the same as that. So if anyone's played that game, this is this is kind of familiar. Narratively, this is a mess. I don't know what they were trying to do. I guess it was supposed to be a commemoration, but in the end, they're trying to tie all these stories together 
to make one cohesive game, and it doesn't work for me. Um, it, it just feels like an afterthought. I know they wanted to do this for the purpose of it being the 50th anniversary, and the, potentially suggesting the idea that this game could be a bridge between Quantum of Solace and Skyfall. So, um, per se, you could assume from this game that uh, everything that happens within this game, so Goldfinger, License to Kill, you know, all of, all of the, the stories you play in this game, um, could come after Quantum of Solace and be set before Skyfall. It's just a theory, of course. Of course, in the movie timeline, that wouldn't be possible. But, you know, it, it, it is a very interesting idea. And I think the premise of the game is actually excellent. <laughs> and I think with a bit of work and more preparation time, they could have made something truly, truly special. Like I said, and, and then the levels just become very hard and... I started to enjoy them much less. I mean, certainly when you get to License to Kill, when you go into the refinery, um, the stealth mechanics are just awful. The, st the stealth is terrible for this game. You can't really cover anywhere. Even if you do take somebody out, you you're just noticed far too quickly. They make the stealth way too difficult in this game. It's far easier to just go in and shoot everyone, to be honest. And also, a lot of the levels are really long. I find, like, Honor Majesty's Secret Service and Goldfinger, some of those levels are quite long. And the Skyfall levels are particularly challenging. Granted, I, I like seeing Skyfall in a game. It's, it's quite cool to see those parts of the movie in the game. The end of this game ends uh, in the Shanghai level in Skyfall, and Bond and M have a phone call in which um, she apologizes for, for ordering Money Penny to shoot him. And he's like, it's all right, you do what you have to. We do what we have to to survive. What the fuck? That totally contradicts the movie. In the film, the whole point of Skyfall was the relationship between Bond and M and how that changed. And that action at the beginning of the movie really did um, infuriate Bond. And, and he was angry and because he, he felt like, um, you know, that she slightly betrayed him by saying, take the bloody shot. And... And then in the end, she, you know, she lost her nerve and made a bad judgment call. This, this game seems to completely ignore it. I know it was being developed around a similar time when Skyfall was being made, but, uh, you know, t come on. It just, <laughs> it, it means that basically there is no story left in Skyfall. If they were to continue making levels for Skyfall in this game, it, it would be pointless because they've just completely contradicted the story. It's also weird seeing characters like Jinx and Holly Goodhead who are nothing like their movie -like likenesses. I think this game just has several missed opportunities. The fact that you have like this guy pretending to be Daniel Craig and you have to be Daniel Craig's Bond for all these adventures. Why, why not have Brosnan come back? Why not have Roger Moore do a voiceover? I mean, this was when he, he, Connery and Moore were alive. Connery and Moore were alive. Lazenby was alive. Dalton was alive. All the Bonds were alive at this point in 2012. They could have voiced their own particular Bonds. I mean, Craig was obviously doing Skyfall, but s still... It would have been so good if they went to the effort to do that, but clearly this was just a a rush job. And I just personally didn't like seeing all these scenes modernised, like seeing um, the, the Goldfinger laser scene modernised um, with the guy voicing Craig. Uh, it it was just wrong. It was, there was just something really disconcerting about it, and I honestly think, rather than that, they should have just used a clip from the movie, because it might have been better, or... You know, have Sean Connery voice voice Bond. Like I say, then it would have been at least something. But I I can't deny. I'm not saying it's a totally unpleasant experience. There are some good things, and there are some fun fun things to be had here. The multiplayer is actually really good. I I think the multiplayer for this game is awesome. You get to play as different characters from Bond's era, and you get to go into various different locations that are in the game. So you get to go into all the locations within License to Kill, Moonraker. Not so much Skyfall, but certainly the, the, the previous missions. And it, it is fun, I must say. It is fun if you have a you know a friend. Uh, I don't know if you can play online with this game anymore, because it is quite a few years old. But it's, uh, it's a shame that this game did so poor in sales. And it actually prompted the closure of Eurocom, the developers, uh, which was a real shame. So, yeah, as a, as a Bond fan, it's worth checking out if you're a Bond fan to experience it. But... Ultimately, your life is not going to be better or worse for not having played it. I mean, the graphics are not bad. I mean, for 2012, the graphics do look decent. And the controls are fairly fine. You know, they're, they're easy enough to, to manage. But it, it's just, as a Bond fan, I just felt there were so many missed opportunities. As a casual gamer, if they were to play this, they wouldn't understand the story. Because there really isn't one. <laughs> it's really just a, a clip show, but in a game. That's kind of how I see 007 Legends. It's a clip show within a game for 007 fans, but it's worth playing. If you have a PS3 or an Xbox, it's worth playing, worth picking up just for the sake of, you know, doing it and for the sake of, you know, remembering the 50th anniversary of Bond, but you may as well have just watched all the movies again. <laughs> you may as well have just done that uh, when Skyfall 
uh, came out, you know, or before Skyfall came out anyway. It's nice to see other classic characters in it, like Jaws and Odd Job and everything. So there are some elements to enjoy, but ultimately, 007 Legends, it's a bit of a fail, really. So I can't say I hated it, but I don't really like it as a game. I, 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 do, I do go back to it every once in a while for the odd mission, because some of the levels can be okay, but it really doesn't work for me. So overall, I'll have to give this game a, a 4 out of 10. music for the game is okay, the, the music isn't isn't anything amazing, and funnily enough, this game was actually written by Bruce Feierstein and apparently won an award for its writing, which I find hard to believe considering the, the messiness that is, the, that is the, the story of this game. But of course, this is just one Bond fan's opinion. Uh, what do you think of this uh, game? Please comment down below, let me know. Even if you haven't played it, comment down below, let me know. Would I recommend the game? Only to Bond fans. I wouldn't recommend this to a casual gamer because they're not going to get much out of it. If you're a Bond fan and you have a PS3 or an Xbox 360, then it's worth it's worth one playthrough just to just to experience it and just to um, commemorate Bond. But ultimately, you'll have much more pleasure from rewatching the movies. <laughs> that's that's what I'll say. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this review, and stay tuned next time for more Bond reviews. I will be reviewing Bloodstone as well, uh, the other Daniel Craig Bond game, uh, GoldenEye Reloaded. And I will also <laughs> review some of the older games as well. I do own some of the PS2 Bond games and also a couple of PS1 Bond games as well. So expect a lot more James Bond video game reviews to come. But uh, as of as of now, this is this is my thoughts on 007 Legends. So thank you very much for watching. And as always, I'm Mr. Tardis 11. See you soon and bye for now.